has two parents. Where's that Scrooge meter right now? <laughs> well, here we are, Christmas Eve. Maybe, maybe it's running a little bit low. And I think low, you know, it's after all the scary ghosts. And, and yay, it's Tiny Tim. And Merry Christmas to all. Or maybe you just got your last Christmas shopping done and you're exhausted, you're tired. Might be right there in the middle, somewhere between those three goes where you're still a little bit jaded. Or if you're really bad off, you're going to be running really high. You know, for any of those kind of, ah, I'm, uh, I'm here because, well, the kids want to go to Christmas Mass or the parents, you know, whatever. So where is your Scrooge meter? I've got one. I'm not going to tell you where it's running. <laughs> it's not running too high. But there is something that happens with regularity throughout the year that can tell me where I am on my Scrooge meter. And I bet I know it happens to you. How many people here have an email account? <laughs> yeah. How many of you get those wonderful little heartwarming stories in your email? You get those? That lets me know real quick what my Scrooge meter is running at. When I read one of those stories, I go, ah, delete. You know? Well, then I guess my meter's running a little high. But if I go, oh, wow. Yeah, you know, it's running a little low. If I look at it, go, well, that's nice, but I'm busy. Well, it's right there in the middle. Well, I got one of those stories. And this was a few months ago. This was stuck with me. And it came from a friend of mine, Dr. John Froggett, down in Tennessee. And here's the story. Last week, I took my grandchildren to a restaurant. My six-year-old grandson asked if he could say grace. As we bowed our heads, he said, God is good, God is great, thank you for the food, and I would even thank you more if Nana gets us ice cream for dessert. <laughs> and liberty and justice for all, Amy. <laughs> Along with the laughter from the other customers nearby, I heard a woman remark, that's what's wrong with this country. Kids today don't even know how to pray. Asking God for ice cream. Well, I never. So, you know where her screw came from. <laughs> Hearing this, my grandson burst into tears and asked me, did I do it wrong? Is God mad at me? As I held him and assured him that he had done a terrific job, and God was certainly not mad at him, an elderly gentleman approached the table. He winked at my grandson and said, I happen to know that God thought that was a great prayer. Really? My grandson asked. Cross my heart, the man replied. Then in a theatrical whisper, he added, indicating the woman whose remark had started the whole thing, too bad she never asked God for ice cream. A little ice cream is good for the soul sometimes. <laughs> Naturally, I bought my grandchildren ice cream at the end of the meal. My grandson stared at his for a moment and then did something I will remember the rest of my life. He picked up his ice cream sundae and without a word, walked over and placed it in front of the woman. With a big smile, he told her, Here. This is for you. Ice cream is good for the soul sometimes. And my soul is good already. <laughs> you know, you get a story like that, it kind of knocks the wind out of that old Scrooge meter. But if that meter's running high, there's a tendency to look at a story like that and say, oh yeah, like that really happened. Did that really happen? I doubt it. Somebody just wrote it. Did this story really happen? Or did somebody just write it? Now I'm going to tell you something. Now, I'm a priest. No, I'm a professional holy person here. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if that story I just read to you is historically accurate, factual, or not. The 
story touched you. If it touched you, the story had meaning. The story had purpose. I can understand that meaning and purpose. I can take that meaning and purpose and apply it to my life as well. Yes, ice cream is good for the soul. How many people do I know that could use a little ice cream? Maybe I ought to sacrifice the ice cream I have and give them a nice big bowl. See, it doesn't matter if these stories are historically accurate or factual. They are real. Because they give us meaning. They give us purpose. They give us life.